In our last podcast, we got the Radiometrics NTX2 transmitter functioning and worked out the kinks on the receiving end using SDR Sharp and DL FL Digi. The NTX2 can transmit without an external antenna attached, and up until this point, that's exactly what we've been doing. However, that won't work for us in flight. We needed to get an external antenna on it. In this episode, I'll go over, go over what I had to do to get an external antenna built and attached to the NTX2, and then get the transmitter board attached to the rest of the instrument pack. I was only marginally involved with this one because mom and I have been focusing our efforts on capsule design and construction and we'll feature that in an upcoming episode, but I'm only here to heckle. Gee, thanks. To get started, I needed to figure out what type of antenna to build. At least a couple of the past flights used a quarter wave whip antenna, which basically ends up being a, being a wire of a specific length that gets dangled below the capsule. Then I found a flight where they built a quarter wave ground plane antenna mounted to the bottom of the capsule. What's even better was that this flight was put together by another father-daughter team, Dan and Emma Rasmussen. That's so sweet! <laughs> no kidding. You can find more details on that flight at tinyurl.com slash ground plane antenna. I especially liked how they had mounted the antenna. One of, my, one of my concerns up to this point was how to keep the antenna from following up the parachute or the balloon lines. Mounting it under the capsule would not only keep it out of the way of those lines, but pointing it downward would help with reception, in theory. And since our balloon would be transmitting on a higher frequency than theirs, our antenna could be made even smaller and possibly not even overlap the capsule like theirs had. I researched how to build a quarter wave ground plane antenna and found a podcast by Martin Lorton that did an excellent job of walking through the process. You can find that podcast at tinyurl.com slash build antenna. So to build our antenna, here's what I started with. Our NTX2 board, a female SMA chassis connector that we would solder onto that board, an SO239 panel connector that would become the frame for the antenna itself, an RG58 coaxial cable, SMA male on one side, and PL259 male on the other. The PL259 end is designed to fit the SO239 panel connector. Um, what does the RG58 thingy refer to? Oops, sorry, I should explain that. It's the type of coaxial cable. Next we have a spool of 12 gauge solid wire, a tape measure, a pair of needle nose pliers. Not shown here are four number six zinc metal screws with bolts, which just fit into the holes of the SO239 connector. So there are really two projects here. You have to add the SMA connector to the NTX2 board and get that wired into the three RF pins that we haven't touched until now, and then you had to build the external antenna. Yes, exactly. I started by adding the SMA connector to the NTX2 board. I found that the legs and center pin of that connector exactly lined up with the holes on the PC board we had attached the chip to. However, the holes weren't quite large enough, so I started by marking the holes that I would drill out, and then used a 1 16th inch drill bit to widen them. After that, the SMA connector fit perfectly. Next, it was time to wire it up. I had two RF ground pins and a single RF transmission pin on the chip. I soldered the pins down to the board, and then soldered down patch lines between the pins and the SMA connector. The transmission pin is connected with the yellow wire here in this picture to the center pin, and the two grounds are the green ones. Those I just connected to outer legs of the SMA connector. Next, it was time to build the antenna itself. For that, I measured out the wire for the transmission line, and the four wires that would become the radials. Those five would ultimately be connected to the SO239 connector. The transmission line would be soldered in, but the radials would be detached using the number six zinc metal screws. To make sure the bolts didn't detach, Martin Lorton recommended either soldering them down or using Loctite on the screw threads. So you're effectively gluing the bolt to the screw. Yep, at least that was the plan. It turned out to be way easier said than done. Anyway, 
I started by stripping the end of the transmission wire and soldering it onto the center pin of the SO239 connector. Next, I stripped the ends of the wires that would become the radios, bent those raw ends into a loop, and fit the screws into those loops. Finally, I screwed them into the four holes of the SO239 connector and bent them down at a 45 degree angle. I tried to space them out around this connector as evenly as I could. Um, what's the little curly loop at the top for? Ah, Martin suggested that to make it easier to test and tune the antenna with, which is actually what I tried to do next. One of the hams that have, has been helping us with this, Mike, loaned me an SWR meter. SWR stands for Standing Wave Ratio, and an SWR meter is used to tune an antenna. Tuning involves adjusting the antenna length and the radio positions to make the antenna resonant at the desired frequency, and to help you determine the standing wave ratio of the antenna. The closer you can get to the, the, this ratio to 1.0 to 1, the less signal is lost during a transmission. The meter that we had, though, required me to transmit something through the meter, and then it would measure how the antenna was performing. In this picture, the antenna was hanging from a toy basketball hoop from the loop at the top of the antenna. The antenna is hooked up to the SWR meter, which is hooked up to the NTX2 board and Arduino, which in turn is hooked up to our laptop. Unfortunately, the needles on the SWR meter didn't even twitch. The NTX2 just didn't have enough power. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain! <laughs> exactly. Our choices at this point were either get a more powerful transmitter, or use an antenna analyzer instead of an SWR meter. The analyzer would not only measure the response from the antenna, it would generate the signal in the first place. I reached out to Mike, and as luck would have it, he happened to have an antenna analyzer that he was borrowing for his own use. He was gracious enough to bring it out to the house to help me tune the, tune the antenna. We hooked the, up the antenna and taped the lead line to a piece of wooden doweling. If there was any metal near the antenna, it would interfere with the testing. The doweling also allowed me to hold it without actually touching it, because that would also cause interference. And of course, it worked beautifully the first time you tried it. Mmm, yeah, not so much. Our first reading showed an SWR of 1.4 to 1 at the frequency we wanted, 434 megahertz. Not horrible, but we wanted to squeeze as much out of this antenna as we could. Since I had already made the, had made the antenna longer than it really should have been, we started trimming pieces off, one sixteenth of an inch at a time. After six or seven trimmings, and after playing with the angle that the radials were at, we got the, we'd gotten the ratio down to 1.3 to 1. We measured the length of the transmission wire and found that it was already shorter than it should have been. That concerned us. Maybe I hadn't cut the wire as long as I thought. We concluded that trimming anything more probably wouldn't really do any good, so we decided to rebuild the antenna from scratch. Since this was now my second antenna, and I had an extra pair of hands to help me assemble it, it went a lot faster than the first time around. More trimming and radial adjustments later, and we finally got the SWR down to 1.1 to 1. So now we have an antenna. Indeed. My next step was to hook it up to the NTX2 board and make sure that it worked. I fired up the test transmission sketch, SDR Sharp and DLFL Digi again, and it worked fine. Now it was time to connect the NTX2 board to the rest of the instrument pack. I went back to the diagrams to, that we put together, and for some reason I thought the transmitter would actually need four connections. The current board, however, would only need three, power, ground, and the data line. So I modified, I modified the diagram accordingly. Now that that is in place, the instrument pack is complete, at least from a hardware standpoint. There's still a little matter of extending the balloon sketch to support the NTX2, but that will come later. So that's it? Can we call the antenna done? Not quite yet. There was still one more thing I needed to do. I wanted to make double sure that the screws holding the radios on wouldn't come loose during the flight. Martin Lorton in his podcast recommended either soldering the nuts down or applying some Loctite to the screws to glue them in place. I opted for the latter. Doing that meant loosening the nuts to get the threads below, applying the Loctite, and then tightening the bolts back down. 
that would mean I ran the risk of ruining a lot of the tuning Mike and I had done. Since he wasn't here for this step, I had no direct way to retune the antenna after applying the Loctite. CJ suggested mapping out where the four radials landed on a piece of paper. As long as I made sure that the radials ended up in those same spots afterwards, it should be reasonable to assume that the antenna performance would have survived. I started by marking on a piece of paper where the radials landed. You can see that you can see that the spots are numbered. Those correspond to numbers I applied on the four radials themselves in the form of one, two, three, or four dashes. Next, I loosened the screws, applied the Loctite, and retightened them. I then matched uh, the radials up with the spots and adjusted them as needed. So is that it? Yes, I think we can call the transmission antenna complete now. So what's next for you? Well, now I think I need to focus on getting the balloon sketch updated to support the NTX2. And after that, I need to finalize what we're going to use on the ground as a receiving antenna. Mike and I had a good conversation before he left about that, so I have some leads. How is the capsule coming? So I think we have our plan for where everything will go. One of our primary concerns, though, is that at this point, making sure everything inside is bolted down or wedged in tightly enough that it doesn't shift around in flight. We do have the mount for the camera done, and we're working on the other pieces. But all in all, I think it's going as well as it can. Even Lucy's getting in on it now. So you're saying for this project, the entire family is rising to the occasion?